as we move into the middle part of October, some of our later songbird migrants show up. This cute little golden crowned kinglet is cousin to the ruby crowned kinglet, uh, which uh, is migrating through now too, but maybe just a little bit earlier in the season. Uh, the ruby crowned kinglet, they can hide their crown quite well, that ruby crown, but uh, these golden crowned kinglets are always showing the golden crown. The male will have a kind of a flashy orange uh, center that he can show sometimes, but uh, all the golden crown kinglets will have that golden crown there. After nesting in the boreal forests of Canada, uh, these uh, hardy little birds here could stick right around in northeast Iowa in uh, protected locations for the winter since they can survive temperatures down to uh, 40 below zero, but uh, most of them will probably move south into uh, a little bit warmer weather maybe in uh, Missouri and uh, places like that. But uh, watch for these uh, neat little golden crown kinglets right now. They're small. This neat little winter wren is another small songbird that uh, migrates through the area fairly late in the season. Uh, these uh, winter wrens nest in really dense evergreen forests, often near a stream up in uh, northern Minnesota or Canada. Uh, again, a, a, a tough little bird, and uh, they will winter, well, probably anywhere from southern Iowa, again, down into Arkansas. Uh, and uh, you'll find them usually in really dense cover. Now, too, notice, too, that uh, the winter wren is is smaller and darker than a house wren. So this is not a house wren. They like to stick that tail straight up in the air. Uh, I usually find them in uh, like a, uh, maybe a, a root ball, uh, really tangled, uh, dense vegetation. And uh, then they'll be kind of uh, flitting around really fast. They almost look like a little mouse running around uh, on the branches and things. But uh, watch for winter wrens uh, now in uh, the mid to latter part of October as uh, they uh, uh, move here through uh, northeastern Iowa. These delightful little pear-shaped puffballs are one of my favorite mushrooms to find out in the forest for a couple different reasons. Uh, first off, if you get them prior to this, while they are still pure white, uh, you can eat them. Uh, they, they, uh, they t well, they've got the same texture as like a, a marshmallow, but with a mushroom flavor. Uh, but uh, just be sure you pick them while they're still uh, pure white. Uh, after they get a little older than this, uh, when they kind of lose their their uh, little kind of uh, very small spines, uh, their uh, skin will turn smooth. And then when they dry out, if you uh, they'll have a little hole at the top. And if you squeeze that, of course, you get a puff of smoke that comes out, uh, but uh, that's really kind of fun to play around with them then. But these pear-shaped puffballs are one of the few puffballs that actually grow on wood, that act, which uh, makes their identification uh, very easy. Uh, but uh, And the other kind of cool thing about these pear-shaped puffballs, notice how they usually grow in big clusters, kind of remind us of uh, like a, a nest of eggs kind of laid there on uh, on the log but uh, watch for pear-shaped puffballs now this fall until uh, until it freezes <laughs>